Welcome to Jewish Life, the show about people and issues in Judaism and some secrets you missed in Hebrew school. Straight in front of me is Dove Letterberg, an American-born artist who spent his last 30 years, I believe, in Israel. And on my left, Yael Aviona, who is also a mystical painter, but of a completely different style, anaglyphic art. Uh, we will introduce you to both their paintings. Let's start with Yael, because ladies first. Uh, mm -hmm. In the Hasidic tradition, Yael, tell me a little about how do you come to being an artist? My late father was a full professor of history, Professor Michael Aviona, who did the uh, Holland model, all the temple. And his God. specialty was what, history and archaeology? A thousand years, as he used to joke, from uh, all the way to the conquering of the, 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 the Muslim conquer. And you took all that he studied and mixed it in colors and splashed it onto canvas. No, actually, I developed my own style. But I've seen you have a lot of historical stuff. I have a lot of, I did, beauties. because I was commissioned to do uh, a lot of uh, biblical illustration. And what kind of art have you done throughout the years? About 800 paintings in oil. Most of them are huge. Are they all mystical? Are they all abstract? They, they, I used to call it myst um, uh, mystical mannerism because they are stylized. You can take nature and being impressed by it. Most people in the world now, God knows why, want the artist to be impressed by their nature. But there is a whole school that is putting their own will on the nature. Well, I must also tell the audience that uh, this painting, which usually in the center we do have a, p a picture of the Rebbe, which is usually a piece of art, this painting is Yael's, it's and I was very happy, a sketch of a painting. Uh, I was very happy that Yael had one of the Rebbe, so I can use that at my centerpiece for these shows. And uh, you can see some of her, the beginning of some of her shows, of her art pieces. Dove, what about you? Well, I'm, uh, as you said before, a native, American native born, although I came from a, a family. Not Indian. No, <laughs> I came actually, I'm a first generation, and uh, my parents actually immigrated from what was then called Palestine in the 20s. Is it because you don't know how to paint any forms, so you're doing it like, uh, what do they say, you, you splash? You take advantage of your, <laughs> your deficiencies, right. Uh, it could be. I think there, uh, I, I admit no, I can't. No, no, please, don't take No, no, I, I, I'm mean, very uh, frank. I can't draw a portrait like Gail can draw. She was trained in the classical tradition, and I have no interest in the classical tradition. I call myself, uh, maybe I should call myself an uh, emerging visionary Jewish artist. Uh, I tend to use, uh, possibly you call them psychedelic colors, the colors that affect the eye, uh, kinetic uh, vibrations, and they, and this, creates a kind of a, a special uh, spiritual energy which emanates from the work. I see here, for example, there's a big piece here. Called the Twelve, the 12 tribes. tribes. Yes, based on the Hoshin, the breastplate of the uh, Kohen, and which had on engraved the, the letters of the tribes and had oracular powers as well. And uh, in, in these individual stones, I see you have the names which were part of that breastplate. Of course. The of names course. were there. Yeah, and uh, illuminated uh, 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 in, in the stone itself. This is, by you, this is Echod. Right. Um, one. Right. Now explain this one. Would you like to... to uh, that would be nice okay. if you can get up and... Sure. Uh, uh, I call this the primordial light, and it's based on the idea of Vahi uh, Erev Vahi Boker, Yom uh, Echad, it was night and was, was day, and it was and then translated the first day, but it's actually in the Hebrew, it's as if it were day one. It's not the primal number. And of course, God didn't make a mistake in his grammar. Uh, so the comment is, that why did they say? You mean to say, it should have said Yom Rishon, right? Right. Yom Rishon means the first day. Right. And instead it says Yom Echad, Yom Echad right. which means day one. Day Let's one. make that clear for our right. audience. So why is it day one? Why is it day one? And the, so the, the uh, commentators, the classical commentators say that there was in the first day of creation a sweet primordial light uh, which permeated everything. 
But God saw that there would be uh, wicked people in future generations, so he hid the light. He hid the light in the Torah. And those so in this uh, painting, you have the image of the light. The primordial light being, being revealed. Being hidden, hidden yeah. and revealed at the same so, time. So when is it revealed? So there, you have a connection of uh, Yom Echad and the famous prayer, Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu. Hashem Hero Echad Israel, the Lord is, is one. So right. th this, fa this primal prayer of the Jewish faith what is the normal custom? You cover your eyes, and you then see the primordial, because what has so happened... So these are like a bunch of fingers covering the yes, eye. Yes, so that particular second, every Jew, no matter what their state was at the second before and what will be after, they're a complete tzaddik. So when they say this prayer... Beautiful. This prayer, they're a tzaddik, so they see the primordial light. And the colors bring out the, 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 the radiance and the... Uh, right. The more you meditate the it, they have the, you have a kind of optic uh, artifact, and uh, you can see many, many interpretations. There's also other connections. Uh, so the word you achad. have the word achad, the aleph, and the chet, the chet and the, the dalet. dalet achad, right. And you have the light. Uh, this is this is this is wonderful. This is absolutely beautiful. Here is a second area. I said the first area I see as myself as an artist was the Hebrew letters. The second area is envisioning the temple. There's a famous uh, idea from Rabbi uh, Barditchov that on Tisha B'Av, every Jew is temple. worthy, is worthy of seeing the temple. The third temple. The third temple. And I had a lot of which my... Which was not yet built. Which was not yet built. So many of my meditations have been taking this, uh, this advice seriously and trying to create models of how we can imagine the third temple. This is a vision. You see the architectural framework. Okay. It was a very high You'll building. See the, uh, the outline of the, the temple. outline of the temple. It was a very high building. And I call it inner and outer space because one of the secrets of the temple was that the, uh, the ark was, was in dimension outside of dimension. What, is, what does that mean? That the inner space and the outer space, even though it had a certain width of wall, was miraculously the same. So that it was like it was a state of 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 being. You measured wall to wall was the same. If you measured the inner wall, the inner space uh, of the of the uh, carton and the outer s space, even though it had a thick wall, it re was the same measurement. So this was a thought, as was said by the rabbis, this was a, a, a constant miracle emanating from the ark. Space and no space at space once. Space and no space at once. And this and is essentially so. One of the ideas of a Jew. Uh, is that is also this, the, the situation of a Jew. We're in space and out of space. Uh, we survive and don't survive at the same time. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. But I see here something interesting, and now you tell me if I'm interpreting it correct. Every interpretation I, I am accept. Look, I'm giving my interpretation. I'm looking at the rays of light emanating from the temple. Okay. Going outwards. Right. Now, uh, if I am correct, the, uh, the Mishnah says that the temple, the windows of the temple were built going outwards, as opposed to normally windows are shaped inwards, right. the, wind, the light coming from the outside in, and right. you want more light in. Absolutely. In the temple, it was the other way around. Because it was like a source of light. It was like radiating. Is this what I'm seeing here? Yes, it's radiating spiritual energy to the world. And of course, the, the, the rabbis told us, if people would know how, how important it was for the health of the world, and for the uh, sanity of the world to be, that the temple would be, that they would send their armies to, to make sure them. that it would be done. The problem is that we, uh, we have not been explaining it properly. And if the people, the more that, that's one of my reasons that working on the temple imagery is an AL's work as well, like in the future city, that people will get some kind of idea and hope. And okay, let's, let's take our next one. Right, uh, this is a work, uh, I was inspired, or all of us have been affected by the Holocaust. I normally don't deal with the Holocaust, but I call this from the Auschwitz to uh, f uh, turning the barbed wire of Auschwitz. That's why you have the special colors, which uh, reminded me of pictures I've seen, this kind of uh, green, very uh, sharp green, and uh, the wire, the barbed wire of Auschwitz turning into Jewish stars. And it's a kind of symbol of the redemption that in spite of, of how far and how low uh, Israel fell, God didn't let it collapse completely. And we have the rejuvenation and the hope for the redemption. So while it's a Holocaust idea, the basic idea is of the future. Okay, let us try the next one. This is actually perhaps my, my latest painting, uh, inspired 
by uh, pictures of very cl of, of, of um, uh, microscopic pictures of brain cells. So it's as if you're traveling into your own brain and what is happening inside, that you have the action. So it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an inner trip going into your inner being. Can I say that this has anything to do with the blue like representing chesed, kindness, and the red representing gvura? Well, of course. The whole brain has veins, the red, red, and, and you have the arteries and the vein and the interaction. I'm looking for the mystical uh, Everything. Meaning. Well, red and, and blue certainly is the base of chesed and gvura. Uh, chesed, kindness, Chesed gvura. is the blue, the bluish uh, spectrum. Kindness. And, and yes, it's a bluish spectrum. And red, of course, is the energy uh, and contraction of, uh, of gvura, of, of uh, limitation. The white is, uh, is could you could think, if you want to think in Kabbalistic terms, yes. it's, uh, there's a whole uh, series of, of colors relating to uh, Sifriotic ideas. So the white could be what we call Keter, or the highest level of the soul itself. The power of will, the power of, of, uh, of uh, wanting. Uh, of uh, will, and the power of pleasure, and the power of Amuna, which is the highest of all. And the circles are simply the cycle of, of, of action. Yeah, yes, I think you could see it, or the synopsis acting. Uh, our work is influenced a lot by, by discoveries in modern science. I'm, in, I'm very much in, in love. Okay, and, I can see this as a combination. And we believe that the, what they call the, the old-time uh, 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 position where the, they were like a, 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 a diametrically opposed science and art and religion are now converging this together. This is actually the motto of our show. Right. Ancient tradition. Converging. Technology. Right. right. And that's what we're doing as well. This I call it uh, Kabbalah Kisses. We talked about art inspired by uh, Kabbalah. Uh, there's a lot of energy here. Uh, in we actually you sure bet there's energy here. Right. Well, I, I think what Kabbalah does for an artist, and I, and I can't say, and people say, what's the secret? How are you able to create such, uh, such things with such energy? And it's, just, it's actually studying. Studying and studying constantly, going deeper and deeper. Uh, into the sources, into the Hasidic sources, into the Kabbalistic sources, and being inspired. And uh, to be an art, if you wanted to be an, uh, an artist, a Jewish artist, I can't see it happening without being into this framework. Because what does Kabbalah do? It, oh, it gives you an expansive consciousness. It says that this world is not just the mundane, mundane framework uh, of what we have, but you have to expand your mind, even blow your mind a little bit, but, and see that God's world permeates in everything we do. And this is coming together of two sides. I would yeah, assume like a kiss. what you call the kiss. Yes. How, did you design it originally? How did it come to be this way? Well, what happens, uh, I, I do a lot of experimentation and what they call play. Uh, there's a painter called uh, uh, Clay uh, uh, from, uh, said, I, I like to take a line out for a walk. I don't know usually before it happens and what's going to happen. And I depend on my and intuition. this is what came out? This is what came out. This is actually, I told you, my work in one way or the other is direct connected with the... Uh, with the is this uh, a conversation? Well, I call it dialogues. <laughs> and I uh, can you just hold it. Yes. I'm holding it, yes. Uh, I call it dialogues. I have a series of, it will be probably 32 paintings, uh, of what I call relationship between two figures. Some people have shown, oh, it looks like Siamese twins or twins in the mother's womb. Right, right, right. Uh, particularly women react to it in that way, of course. <laughs> uh, but it's like people in, here is what I call affection, people in, in the kind of harmony between each other. They're, they're essentially almost the same form, but there's very subtle differences between the two. So you have a whole series of these? Of people as in, 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 kind, in a dialogue context. And some of them actually uh, not as uh, as as uh, uh, beautiful in that sense, and maybe they, they expect the other areas of human context, which is not a uh, dialogue. It's almost, I call it anti anti law. We are continuing our interview with our two artists. This time we'll start with Yael Aviona. Yael, her art is called anaglyphic art. Ana is like the word anesthesia, without. Glyphic, like hieroglyph, it means that we have in our cell, in our uh, uh, skull, uh, right brain and left brain. The latest <coughs> scientific, and I'm following it up, all the latest, uh, because our art is called Art Influenced by Science and Kabbalah. If you don't mind getting up, and we will go to our first painting here, 
And I am looking at a copy here, and this is... It's called Tzimtzum. Okay, now tell us, what is Tzimtzum? Tzimtzum is the, the only reason that we are here on earth, because there was... A hand is like a circle. God is giving. He's just giving people a contraction into a form of kmitzah. The, the world is being made by kmitzah. And here is the, here is the like, kmitzah is what the big priest was doing. He was taking the, 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 and, uh, the right. three fingers, machada. the little three fingers. Yeah. And he was uh, taking only a kmitzah of the, the, of the spices. We want to make a very limited... The idea is that in order to give us the world we live in, he had to contract a small, small fraction because of him. Because there's too much light, too much light and that we can't, we can't the, take the, it. the vessel we'll, can it, be broken. Explode. So actually, but uh, the latest scientists said that the world is probably like a football, and, and that's the, the, they think that it is uh, uh, limited into a form that is like a football. This is the latest scientific So expert. you mean so that what, what the kmitza means? No, the kmitza mean, uh, the kmitza mean... But it does have a shape of a football. It does. The whole, the whole, the whole, whole world, the whole right. world. But by doing so, and this is the anaglyphic work, if you look through those glasses, through the right brain, uh, men work with the right brain, Abba and Ima work. And when you look at it, you get these glasses when you come to the exhibition, and the kids love it because it gives them a, a way to see reality in various form. Okay, when I look with one eye... I the, see red, more the red, of the red, the red. I see more of the hand. You don't see all of it. And I don't see the top. The I top don't see all. the menorah. That's the tzimtzum. And when I look with my green, I see more of the menorah and less of the hand. It's not menorah. These are the worlds. People gotcha. mistake the seven. This is the Garden of Eden, the yud, yud, yud. That, that, that will come. These are not what you're saying. These are olamot and these are aratzot. Okay, this is slowly, slowly, slowly. These are worlds, spiritual yeah. worlds. Yeah. Okay, and how here many do we temple. have here? Here is the temple. Seven. Always. Seven, seven worlds. worlds. And seven aratzot. And seven Cain. lands. Cain was, is here. You can look at Cain here. And, and Korach. Korach is probably here. So you have all, all of the... Man, you really cover the world here. Mm -hmm. And in the center this is, is the, the temple. This is the temple. And the stone that is the foundation. So even a shtia. Like a core of an atom. That right. the, whole, the whole world is based actually on that stone. And when you realize that Jerusalem has that stone now underneath an Arab building, the, the, the form that is the stone uh, of uh, the stone that uh, is underneath the, the, the Dome the, of the, the Rock, dark, it's actually the form... The whole painting that I do is in his image as created uh, man. Image is very important, not spiritual. So that, uh, that these Arabs... That's a very interesting point. So what you're saying is that God created man in the image... In, in form. In uh, his uh, image so let's and in take his it as form. Awesome. Our form reflects on him. That means that, uh, that we are based... The most important form in Judaism is the cube, because we are made with one cube is the head that moves only, not the head, the, 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 the spine core, they rule. Then another, so that's exactly the world, the upper garden of Eden, the lower garden of Eden, and where Jerusalem celestic is. So we are in his image, even after the Messiah will come, we'll still be in his image. We can definitely see the difference between Dove's work and Yael's work. Dove is really, really abstract. He's abstract. And uh, Yael does take more form. Uh, but oh. if you look with the glasses, you actually they disappear. And that's the whole idea. Okay. This is Jerusalem at the time of the Messiah. The original painting is 2 meters 60. Being a native born person, a Jerusalemite, a native, and being the daughter of Professor Michael Aviona, who did the Holy Land model that we are all familiar with, the temple. He, I always said, he was an expert of the second temple. Of the past. Uh, the, uh, the second temple. I'm an expert on the third temple. Oh. <laughs> and it's not a joke because I have read everything That's a monumental from undertaking. Rambam and his drawing, uh, the drawing of Rambam of the So when the Shiach comes, I have whom, who to refer him to. Yeah. You're going to help him build the temple. You said déjà vu. <laughs> you have seen it. <laughs> this is Jerusalem being uh, in the time of the Messiah. This is the temple descending over, over a, a city. Here is the tree of life, like a DNA, life. And then the, the river of life, I read, Hadam wa nefesh. People never ask themselves, what color will be the river of life? Red. That means that these are the rivers, and there will be four of them. So this is only one that goes to uh, the Dead Sea and sweeten it. Now so here we have a, a vision of the third temple. And so I told you I'm going to tell you secrets. 
Of course, when you watch the show, we will introduce you to things you will never learn in Hebrew school. It will be such so a please, beautiful city. Stay tuned. Okay, what is this? This is fragment of that city, beautiful city made of crystal, because uh, the, the city will be of energy, and man will be different. Uh, light. So this is all Jerusalem. Yeah, and the river of life and the reflection at night. They say about the Temple of Herod, the J Jerusalem. Whoever saw uh, it uh, said it's most the most beautiful city in the world, and the future Jerusalem. Nobody will want to live uh, it because it will be the center of the world and be such beautiful a relationship between people and God that nobody will want and to live. This is Yael's version of okay. nightlife in Jerusalem. <laughs> <laughs> I painted many, many paintings of the city I love so much, Jerusalem, being born there. And I call this painting, you can see it actually from the Wolfson Tower. If you ever have owned a flat there, that's the view you see. And I call it Diamonds of Jerusalem. Because the Knesset, with all the ravens sitting there and flying to, to the Wolfson, is made of a pink uh, stone. And so this is a diamond shining in, in pink. Now, the, the Israel Museum, is actually from a marble that is greenish. And what you see is actually diamonds of Jerusalem today. And this whole area is... It's, the, it's, the, it's actually the valley. As a child, I the went... valley to, of... Emeka uh, uh, that, that was done in 67. As we took over the Welling Wall, oh, I was sitting there and painting it. I'd like to see it. some of them. This is the tree of life when Adam and Eve has been thrown to a world that is darker. We think our world is light, but compared to the world of eternal life, what we lost when that Eve was tempted by some snake and, and they, she, she offered the a ant, serpent. Yeah, the serpent. But this is actually again the DNA and the, the infinity sign. Put it in writing. Okay, so what do we have here? What, what is this the is the world. Of this the, the idea this is, is the world. And this is like life. a man. Er chapaim. This is this is like takes in, the shape of a man. So and the and these are the three, ribs. The ribs are actually in the menorah. Okay, the top three represent Keter, Chuchma, and Bina. And, and, and I think then I, I wasn't religious when I did this painting, so I should have switched because Ima is here and Abba is here. Chesed. So this is the, the represent the right and left brain. And, and, and the willpower. And, and, and uh, emanating every one of us. There will be a painting of and the here, the six. The Tif Eret is here. The, the, the uh, six, six emotions? Then action. The, the, the action. Malchut. Which Malchut. is Malchut. Malchut. Okay. So this is Chesed Gvura Tif Eret, which is kindness, strength. And beauty. Malchut Yesod Netzachod, and then Tif Eret, and then I'm sorry. Chesed and Gvura, and this is Netzachod Yesod. Malchut. This is humility, splendor, the kingdom, the world of action. Salvation and kingdom. Yeah, what we live. Okay, so this is the tree of life. This is all that we have here. But we have this one. This is this is actually what the city will look like when the the reflection of light. The whole world will change. It won't be the same light that we have today. It will be a light of energy of of the three forces of Munar Atzon and Oneg, when people will be having uh, the will to, to love God and, and to do things uh, toward him. The, so that's, the city will be c celestic. It will be shining. And as you can see, the painting shine. And all these paintings are... Anagnific. Who are your customers? Who are our customers? I mean, I don't mean customers in terms of, of money. I mean customers who is interested in the site. They are not uh, what you would call religious uh, in the in the orthodox sense, but they're looking for a Jewish identity, and I think that uh, this work uh, stirs something in their soul. We're talking about lawyers, people in mid-career, doctors. Uh, on the other hand, our best audience, actually, the people the who really dig our work, as it were, are the young. Uh, Even 15. Un under 20. Yeah. yeah. With them, there's well, no they problem. Well, appreciate the spirituality. They, they you should. certainly are bringing a dimension of spirituality, which is unparalleled and unequaled, and it's coming from Jerusalem, the which Holy City. makes me want to go to Israel. We'll be happy to have anyone come to visit us. And to see how we work. Even if they, they, even the they studio, come after the June. Studio, I have to tell you, even though I'm not going to say, uh, you're going to tell me, oh, pardon the mess, it is so beautiful. It is. The color and the uh, stuff on the wall and the aura of Israel. Of Jerusalem, this is unbelievable. It's a great merit to live in Jerusalem. On the website, you can also keep up with the Letterbergs where they are right. um, displaying right. their <laughs> works. And otherwise, you can visit them in Israel and Jerusalem. And to you, our listeners, we took you for a trip now through artwork, but 
If we will get enough callers, we may actually decide to take a trip together as a group to Israel, and we can visit the Letterbergs in their studio. If you are interested, do call us. We will make a group, and we will go together based on the interest. And until we meet again, hopefully with Mashiach, we hope you will visit the Letterbergs at their studio. In Jerusalem. And here and in Jerusalem. And until then, we wish you Baruch HaVatzlocha and all the best. Mashiach, Mashiach, Mashiach. Oh, yeah.